Good morning. This morning, let us begin our worship time with a prayer for the Fiji mission team who are down in Fiji. It's Monday morning there, but they are serving us as our mission team away from this church. And it's one of the reasons that you see the rookies up here preaching. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we lift up the Fiji mission team to you, Lord. We lift them up for their travels, that they are safe in going from place to place, in bringing the word and the encouragement of this body to your team down in Fiji, to give those people down there the hope and encouragement and the knowledge and the pleasure that we have here to continue on in your work and your mission for them to bring the gospel to the entire world. Thank you for protecting them and being with them and bring them back to us safely. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. This morning I want to talk about something that happened to me about a month ago. I uh, had an incident that uh, I experienced a kidney stone. And uh, it was a humbling experience, to say the least. It started out quite mild, about 12 o'clock in, in the night. And by 3 o'clock, I was in immense pain. And my wife had gotten up and noticed that and said that we need to go to the emergency room. Of course, I should have gone earlier, but I wasn't going to go for a minor back pain, which is all it seemed to be. And uh, we were down at the emergency room, and I got relief uh, only by walking in circles until they gave me some painkillers. After six hours there, uh, we left, and after a few days, I was back to normal. Well, you're probably wondering why I even bothered to tell you that. And most of the time when somebody told me that they had a, a kidney stone or something like that, I was sympathetic, but, you know, I really had no experience with it, so it didn't really touch me that greatly. And until you actually have something like that, you understand what people go through. You have a more... Uh, appreciation for the experience, so to speak. But after I told people what had happened, many people, even the pharmacist that I picked the drugs up from, said, is this your first one? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then when I told my boss, he started to give me his story about it. And he became sort of a part of a fraternity. <laughs> and you, uh, everybody has their story. So it was very interesting to go through that. But it did open my eyes to something about the Lord waking you up to a few things. And you never really pay attention until you get hit in the face with something like that. We appreciate our health. We appreciate what the Lord's given us, and we take it for granted until something like that happens. And everybody knows that without your health, you have nothing. I mean, you have to have your health in order to function. And we take it for granted, and I did take it for granted. And it was brought to my mind quite seriously at that time. In fact, when they did the CT scan, they found other things that uh, they never expected. So I always functioned with the fact that, or the thought that I was six foot tall and bulletproof until then. In the same sense, we ignore God's word until something like a crisis comes about. We ignore what he tells us or what it says in his word in the Bible. We ignore the advice, the direction, the things that we're supposed to do until some crisis comes. Then we turn to him at that point in time as I ran to the emergency room and asked for directions. And in some cases, if we'd been in his will in the first place, we wouldn't be where we ended up at. We wouldn't have been in that place. We wouldn't be searching for the answer, searching and rummaging through the Bible for that verse to hang our hat on or that thing that we always had to do. But we're going to talk today about the Bible and why it's important in our everyday walk, why we should be in it every day and why we should know what it says. As we read earlier, uh, Psalm 19 was with meditation verse. Meditation was 1 through 11. But I'm going to read, uh, I would like us to read 1 through 6 together. And then we're going to talk about that. 
You have that in your bulletin. Ready? Begin. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run the course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. And thank God we have this tent because we would be in the heat right now. Have you ever been able to see all the stars? Think about it. Have you ever looked up at the night sky and really seen the number of stars up there? If you're trying to say that you have and you live here, you haven't. Because there's so much artificial light at night that it drowns out most of what's up there. You have to get away from all the artificial light in order to see what's really in the sky at night. Years ago, me and some friends went up to Haleakala and spent the night inside the crater. And little did we know it was a full moon, but before the full moon rose over the crater rim, the stars were just so magnificent. You couldn't imagine the number of stars that you actually see when there's no other light to, to drown them out. And when the moon rose up over the edge of the crater, it was as bright as day inside there. You could walk around just like it was daytime. And that was the last time that I believe that I've actually seen what's out there at night. The pureness of the heavens that's, that's talked about right here. The heavens declare the glory of God. And this is before I was a Christian and I could see that and I remember that clearly. It speaks to you by saying that somebody made that. It wasn't a primordial thing that's, that came out of a big bang. Everyone throughout the entire world has seen the sun, the clouds, the wind, the rain, the stars, and the beauty of it all. That's what the psalmist is writing about here. They can't deny seeing those things. Now, as time has passed, and we're as far in the future as we have now, and so many things are going on, I notice that you, t every, at least I do, you tend to look horizontally. Very rarely, how often do you look up at the clouds in the sky and just notice the clouds moving by? Usually you're staring at the car in front of you on the freeway. It speaks of every human being and of existence in creation. And it, the sun rises as an athlete every day, running a race to be seen by all. Now, a lot of what was described in these first six verses, we were probably brought up to believe, oh, this is Mother Earth. And you hear that on the news quite a bit. 